Yep, that's right, it's me just filming a bucket again. And this time it's got the 24 hour yeast in it, so I can be as impatient as I like. Now, as far as setting this one up, I did everything right, which I did wrong last time. Everything was sterilized perfectly, I've been scrubbed down, cleaned properly, rinsed thoroughly, sterilized properly. Um, I managed to get all the sugar dissolved thoroughly before even opening the sachet of yeast. Um, got the water level up, got the water level to the right temperature, being 40 degrees Celsius, being approximately 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Because that's the temperature it's got to start off at. And then I added the yeast to it, and yes, it's, it's obviously starting to ferment. We've got a nice bit of bulging on the lid, so that's good. So by tomorrow morning, 7 o'clock, we should have all of the 6 kilograms worth of sugar um, turned into um, alcohol between... Hmm... 14 and 16 percent roughly okay and it should all be done and dusted nice uh, I've taken a wine hydrometer reading so I should be able to get a good handle on what kind of alcohol by volume percentage we've actually got when the time comes and we do start distilling so essentially I'm doing it right I mean last time there were so many opportunities for it to fail it's, it, was, it, was, it was untrue, because I didn't understand the type of yeast I was using, and I was following instructions for a different type of yeast, and so on and so forth. So this is just about developing skills, making sure I understand the nature of what I'm dealing with here, experimenting with different quantities and qualities of yeast and sugar to try and work out which is most efficient and which is most financially efficient prior to working out what other sources of sugars I could use and how I could possibly prepare them whether I need to get my hands on special enzymes so that I can then turn let's say uh, the residues or leftovers or rubbish produced by a bakery into sugars which I can then ferment into alcohol which I can then turn into something which I can distill Okay, uh, and then I've got to think more about the still itself. Now, I've decided and discovered that with this one particular still, I can I can do quite a lot. I can get alcohol of a burnable quality, but I get the feeling, by comparison with figures I've seen for other countertop stills, that this one boils rather quickly, and so therefore. It might be worthwhile um, either building my own or getting another countertop still. Now, I've been discussing with myself, you know, the way that I do, forms of still design. I've been doing some research on the internet about different forms of still design. And I think I know what I want to create. So it'll require some plumbing parts and a tea urn. And once I've experimented with the, with the tea urn, I can then get rid of the tea urn and use a pot which can then be heated by wood gas outside. Okay, you see where this is going. So experimenting with on-grid technology so I can then learn how to design a system which relies upon off-grid technology. Alright, thus to reduce reliance upon the grid and to provide me with combustible fuel which I can use in spirit stoves indoors for the purposes of cooking, heating, boiling water, and the other comforts of home. Okay, here's one for you guys and girls. Why is it that most people don't do it? Okay, if this is going to save the planet and save all of us, why is it that most people don't do uh, the home production of ethanol for energy purposes? Well, it's a drag. It requires planning, preparation, and time. Okay, it can cut into your day. It is so much easier to flick a switch. It is so much easier to pay an electric bill or a gas bill or your LPG bill or your bill for whatever. But are we really going to be in a world in the future whereby electricity, gas and the rest of it is going to be affordable in 10 years time, 20 years time, whatever? Will it be more affordable to go to your local 99p shop and do what I did and buy your kilograms of sugar at 82 pence per kilogram, thus very close to the price of a cash and carry, and not needing to have to spend out on 25 kilograms at a time? 
than to use that with a yeast and to create alcohol and then to distill it at home. It's about the future. And if people are suffering from energy poverty now, how bad will things be in 10 years' time, 20 years' time, 30 years' time? I mean, think about it. Why is the British government sending out battleships to the Falklands? Well, there's reserves of oil and gas in that part of the world. What do you think? Okay? It's a scarce resource. These are the resource wars I've been talking about all these years. It's starting to happen. Wake up and start learning about off-grid stuff because you might have to use it one day.